Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> and Happy Chili Wednesday wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the live show. We are Living Felt, based in Central Texas, probably a lot warmer than a lot of you today. And we're so glad that you're taking time out of your day to hang out with us. Today, we are going to turn your scraps into sweet little treasures. So we're gonna look at some fun embroidery stitches and we're gonna look at just some scraps in general and ways you can play with them. And thank you so much for tuning in. It's gonna be a fun show. It's an interactive hour-ish. So you'll see that there is a live chat over to the side Side. please participate share your ideas maybe share your favorite stitches or maybe your favorite scrap buster project today we're just making little tokens little mementos little treasures ornaments whatever you want to call them and um, just remember that everyone who comments during the live show gets entered to win a prize and I want to say hi to some folks that are already checking in so make sure you say hi if it's your first show let us know where you're from maybe even tell us what the temperature is I want to say hey to Maureen Wells uh, Suzanne all the way in Sweden and Linda in Tennessee who asked in the chat what are y'all making while you're waiting for the show to get started Beth in Kansas hi and Barbara in Canada Burr I know it's cold up there y'all Christina all the way in Poland Diana in Wisconsin hi to Meg and also Susie in Missouri but not in the same place <laughs> and Julia and Guernsey we always fantasize of going over there <laughs> all the time um, Audrey's in the UK Pam's in California Amy in Virginia I think Kim in Manitoba wins the temperature award because she said it's like negative 21 Fahrenheit there today. Wow. I don't think we'd know what to do if that happened here. Uh, hi to Daniela in Boston and Diana in Washington, Bonnie in Arizona, and everybody, everybody tuning in for the live show. We're so happy that you're here, and I hope that you'll play along with us and maybe share what you made if you joined us last week and led us on a wonderful little wet felting tutorial. We're going to kind of pick up off of that and share some ideas. If you did that project, some more things you can do with it or if you just want to make in this case would be like a flat felt like we did with our artful felt fabric this is what we're going to pick up with and make our scraps from so remember to comment during the live show and share and if you have any questions post them there if we don't get to them you can post down below after the live show and we also draw prizes for those folks so on that note I have two prizes to give away right now to people who commented after Anne's really fun wet felted heart garland tutorial and our prizes today go to Tammy Hansen and Colleen Lighty both these gals commented after the live show and you win a really fun selection of fibers that we gave away last week to make Anne's artful felt heart garland I think I said that right <laughs> kind of a tongue twister and thanks y'all for being here so the fairies are just itching to share some stuff with you they are uh, standing right off camera with me and they're going to share some fun things that you might consider for your felting whether for Valentine's or maybe even Easter the first up is the lovely fairy Hannah Yay! hey everybody how y'all doing today I hope everyone's staying warm I know it's I think 48 or so here and for me personally 70 is almost too cold so it's really cold <laughs> for me <laughs> so I'm showing y'all one of our new MC1 goodie packs so I'm sure y'all are aware we have our regular goodie our winter goodie and our fall goodie well now you are seeing our rainbow MC1 goodie which I think is going to give our other packs a run for their money so in this pack we've got a variety of colors you're going to be a quarter ounce of 12 different colors starting with slate black onyx this is actually cx2 winter white um, i've got pale peach in here true red mandarin lemon peel jelly bean green caspian grape coral reef and this looks like berry so it's a fun little variety of colors, great for needle felted two, uh, 2D or 3D projects, just a fun little way to spruce up your collection at home. Lots of excitement for the rainbow. Yeah, Beautiful I know, rainbow. I love the colors. Anything yeah. rainbow, I'm all about it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all, next up I got Miss Fairy Holly for y'all. Have a great day. And I wanted to say hi to Joan Tooley. Mm -hmm. I just spoke with you on the phone. Thank you so much for all your kindness and I think you're watching us right now, so hi. <laughs> Here's Holly. Yay! Yay! Hi, everyone. 
everyone. Today I'm going to show you the um, short fiber goodie bags, which are one of my favorite things to make and, um, well, collect. I haven't made anything with them yet. But uh, <laughs> our short fiber goodie bags are great. You get three ounces of our Merino short fiber bats in at least 12 colors. So this is re very representative of the round we have going on right now. And we have sunshine, beaver, white, ivy, zinnia, got to switch, evergreen, red, um, tide pool, iris, midnight, glacier, slate, primrose, and black. So you see you get a really great um, variety of naturals and neutrals and all the pretty berry colors and blues and everything like that. So it's great for wet felting, but you can also incorporate it into your needle felting. And there you go. Devin McCarroll says, it's a short fiber pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Two of my favorite things. Uh, Alice Sheep says, wheel of fortune, spin for the color you get. Right? I wanted to like <laughs> big eyes there, but I didn't have time. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Now for Fairy Ann. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> Hi friends, thank you so much for being here with us today. Firstly, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who joined us for the show live or watched the replay after last week. I had such a fun time hanging out with y'all and felting some hearts and just it means all of your kind words just uh, made my heart grow like three sizes too big. <laughs> so, <Aww. laughs> thank you. <laughs> I am sharing with you today, this is one of my favorite embellishment fibers. These are the wool neps. We do have a goodie bag assortment for those as well. So if you're wanting to get a really broad range of colors, this is an excellent way to go. So this is a lot of neps. <laughs> so this is um, just an example of the values that we really try to achieve with that goodie pack. The actual colors do vary from round to round. Uh, so the colors that are in our current round are evening sun white tulip this one right here is cocoa lagoon kiwi charcoal lavender mushroom and red so the neps goodie bag is going to come with an ounce handy dandy bag it's about four inches by six inches so I'll kind of rotate it so you can see about how much is in there. Definitely, it's gonna it's gonna accompany you on multiple felting adventures. <laughs> lots of love for those colors and lots and lots of love for your tutorial last oh. week. And <laughs> everyone really enjoyed it. Thank y'all mm -hmm. so much. You are beautiful, wonderful people, and we appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Fairy Kayla is here to share some fun stuff. <laughs> hey everybody, Fairy Kayla here. I'm going to keep the, the goodie train rolling here and show you <laughs> our Tussa goodie. Each one of these colors is about a quarter of an ounce, so you get lots to work with here. You'd probably like to see it, huh? Oop, oop, but maybe. There we go. <laughs> so the colors that we've got in this round currently are Tulip, Sand Dollar, Saffron, Mist, Bay, Sun, Violet, and Kiwi. And these can change a little round to round. They're awesome for wet felting, kind of achieve a really cool, almost like lightning bolt texture to it. Oh, can you name the light blue one too? Oh, the light blue one? You snuck out of here, didn't you? This <laughs> one's Hydrangea. He was hiding from me. <laughs> Yeah, so lots of fun for wet felting. You can even use them for needle felting too. So, And I know we're doing some stitch work today, so I had a question for you ladies. What do you, what do you say to an angry woman at a sewing machine? What do you say to an angry woman at a sewing machine? You seem stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you take back over, Miss oh. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> and I just see a big round of hearts for all the fairies. This is our crew. We call them the fairies because they're just full of magic every day. They make your orders, they answer your emails, they answer your phone calls, and they make everything we have in the shop. Oh, and by the way, they felt 
too, which is great, great fun for me to see what they make and the colors that they like and the ideas that they have. It's a really fun uh, collaborative collective group. So I'm glad that you all get to spend a little bit of time with them. And today we are going to hopefully share some scrap busting ideas for you and liberate you a little bit, even though we're not actually felting. You know, probably uh, some of you know a little bit of needle felting or a little bit of wet felting. Some of you have never stuck your toe in the water, but there's really nothing quite like handmade felt. Handmade felt goes way beyond commercial felt, although we'll be looking a little bit at that today. These are some of the hearts that Anne made for us last week, and this is commercial felt as we normally get it. So night and day, these two things here, and someone just asked about neps. We'll get up close here in a minute and you'll see some of the different fibers and uh, we used neps in these hearts. But these are true, original, one-of-a-kind pieces of fabric that you make with your bare hands. And um, we actually made what we called our artful felt fabric last year, which was basically just a great big sheet of uh, felt, handmade felt, where we did the same process as Anne, but we just made a big square and we put pre-felt on the bottom and merino top on top and lots of embellishment fibers. And I still have lots of scraps from those and other samples. And we're gonna bring those back today and show you some more projects you can make with them. We, we did have a scrap project uh, that we made with them last year. I don't know what all we made, but this is an example of one of the things we made, which was a little um, magnet and um, we did a little bit of stitch work on there, a little bit of printing on fabric, and we turned it into a magnet. So this has a regular felt back. So today, really, we're gonna learn some embroidery stitches. So hopefully that will help you liberate your scrap pile and start playing with it again and not toss it away. Cool, cool. So if you're ready, say, I'm ready. I hope you have some stuff uh, to play with. Pull out your scraps, y'all, because uh, I have mine. Maybe have a cup of tea or a cup of cocoa because, man, I know it's chilly in a lot of places. We're not going to get cold here. It's ch getting chilly, but we're not going to get cold, cold, I think, and, until the weekend. So you guys stay warm wherever you are. <laughs> okay, so I brought some scraps with me, but first thing I want to look at just a couple of projects. And then we'll jump to my scrap pile and we'll jump to just some of the basic tools and equipment you need. It doesn't take much. And even if you've never stitched before, today we're going to show you some basic stitches that just anyone can do. Don't worry about getting it right. Don't worry about getting it wrong. Just think about having fun and, you know, putting your heart into whatever you're making. So I'm going to turn down here a little bit and we'll look at um, a couple of the pieces I brought. And the, so this is the one from last year and I'll just start with that. This one is just cut from a square piece of felt. We printed on a piece of fabric. That tutorial is under our Wooly Wednesday playlist. And this is just, this piece right here is just handmade felt with just a couple of little pieces of embroidery and uh, on here and a little bit of stitching. We stitched it to some commercial felt and we stuck some secret magnets under there that came with this bar pin magnet. We do carry these bar pin magnets in the shop and that just becomes a fun little gift. Today we'll look at some things that are a little more, um, involve a little more stitching and you can do a little or a lot. It's totally up to you. Uh, so this is an example of a sweet little ornament. I just stuffed it with core wool. Heck, you could even stuff it with lavender. You know, we made those little lavender drawer sachets. This could be like a drawer sachet, hang in a room, hang in your car, whatever. And this is just a little bird ornament because everything doesn't have to be all hearts, whether you're gifting for Valentine's or for a birthday or just to cheer up someone's day, you could attach this to a greeting card. Um, and this is a little work in process that we'll pick up in a minute. So it's using commercial felt, handmade felt, that's really scraps, and then some more um, scrappy bits too. So there's really so many directions you can go with this. And let's start by looking at some scraps right here. So I'm just gonna fill up my table a little bit and show you. These are some scrap pieces uh, from felt work. And that's just merino top in the back with a bunch of probably um, tussa silk and viscose. I don't even remember what all we, we used on here. This is, I think this was from our wet felted flowers last year. So see the really hot pinks. Um, and this was like just the trim of what was left. So there's different colors on each side. This is, was just 
part of our felt fabric there. Piece of pre-felt on the back and some merino on top. All these little scraps have some little treasures in here that you can pick out. This is just a solid piece of, of made from merino top. There's another uh, sample. So these are some of my bigger samples, again, from our felt flowers. Uh, these are some of my bigger scraps, I mean. And then you can start to get really scrappy. So here's some little scrappy bits. And um, I have some that are big enough that I could cut some shapes out of, like these. And um, even these. So once you get some pieces that you really start to like and they're interesting to you, we're going to look at that today. This is the makings of a little house. And then just some bits and textures that I found interesting. So if we look in here real close, these are some neps. Someone asked, what do you do with neps? I call neps like um, confetti for your fiber art because you can just drop them in there and we have some little strings and yarns. So these are just some fun scraps that I've sort of set these guys aside because the colors really spoke to me or the textures really spoke to me to use in a project or somewhere. Like for example, and I, I've used these in a few places, my little stitching book. I used a piece of my handmade felt in my stitching book. This is a piece of our you know, felt fabric that I used for my stitching it's a sort of little sleeve. So you can get pretty creative, but hey, don't let this stuff go either. So here's like, this is some really scrappy bits, some small bits, and they may not be quite as interesting as, you know, this little stack that I showed you here, but look at these fun colors, red to orange with this flame, you know, going through it. So save these tiny bits until you're just sure that there's no use for them. And I just save them like in a little Ziploc bag or something. But I do separate the super scrappy stuff from what I consider like real potential on its own um, from the bigger pieces as well. And so we're gonna look at working with these today together. Cool? Cool, okay. So do y'all have some scraps that you've been saving up? Have you have them been having them uh, set aside, not sure what to do with them? This is the time. This is the, the project to do with them. Is just get creative. I'm going to use this piece right here, and I'm going to cut a heart out of it. Now, I have some shapes, and I just make my shapes freehand or however you want. I just cut them out of cardstock or something so that I have my own little template. And for this, I'm going to find the pattern on here of the design that I like and um, trace it onto the back side. So if we go right here, I love all of this texture and movement, and I want to kind of capture that in the top of my heart the best I can. So I know that I want it about right here, and then I will just turn it over and try and get my heart in the right place. Uh, so that I have that in there for cutting out. I find that a pencil works really well for marking up the fabric, the felt. It just, as long as it's, uh, as long as the pencil shows, you don't need anything stronger. Now you might have a pen that dissolves with ironing that you can use. I just always have a pencil ready and I know it's not going to bleed through and cause me any problems. So I can see my heart there well enough to cut out. And I'm just going to cut it out with my regular scissors um, so that I don't want any, I don't want a decorative edge on this particular piece. Now, last week Anne showed us how to make hearts by cutting out the pre-felt and then wet felting the whole piece. The benefit of doing that, and we'll look at these here together, is that the edges on her piece are healed um, and she even wraps some fibers around the backside so the heart looks more finished. And when you cut handmade felt, you can see the layers. And um, that's okay, we're gonna be stitching them. Technically, this is felted enough that it's not gonna come apart. But let's zoom in here and look at a couple of these uh, cut pieces. 
compared to Anne's. Oh, good, that's a real nice close-up. Thank you, Anne. So these I had white pre-felt on the back, and then you see when you cut them, you can see those layers. And really, it's very cool. Like, you're like, wow, how could I use that? But <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, then this is also, now you don't have to use white pre-felt on the back, and we did not in all the cases. So here's a green one, and it's got the orange, you know, showing through there. But what you can see is that you get a real blunt you know, a real blunt edge here. And if you're making something that you want to be durable, like a used, like a bookmark or something like that, or a journal cover, you really wanna stitch those edges down or you could wet felt the edges down. So see how those are, they're just a little bit loose and it's because all the fibers are going to this blunt edge. Whereas if you look at these hearts that Anne made uh, with us last week, and many of you made them as well, she, this one's easier to see. See how this is the pre-felt purple. She wrapped the fibers back around this side even, and all the edges are healed. So they're tapered now versus being blunt. Even if you made it really thick, so this is blunt and this one has been tapered, and we call that healing when you wet felt it. In this case, we're going to be stitching our pieces, so we're not worried about that blunt edge. And if it's decorative, honestly, it doesn't really matter. But I just wanted to answer the question that what about just making something in a rectangle and then cutting the shape out? You can, but what you have are these unhealed edges, and it's just something to consider in whatever you're making. So let that conversation take you wherever it takes you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is kind of build sort of like we have going on over here with my little house, but I think I'm going to use this interesting little piece as part of my little house. And I know I have some purple over here for my rooftop. And y'all feel free to ask some questions. Anne's gonna let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, so we can kind of have a conversation as we play with this together. So these are the three little pieces I'm going to start with. And then you want to just gather up whatever embroidery uh, thread you have. Um, these are some little vintage embroidery spools I have. And uh, then, of course, lots of bobbins and whatever you might like to stitch from. Okay. Just a little close. Let's just come out a little tiny bit. Okay. So let's turn this into a house. And I just, I, part of me doesn't want to cut it whenever I see these little things. I like them so much that I almost, I almost don't want to lose it. It feels like it's decorative already. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'll go ahead, I'll just cut it. Yeah, that's so hard. <laughs> and then I'm gonna be stitching over it somehow, but I think I'll leave those little designs in there and I'll cut this part off. And that will be my little house. And then I'm going to make a little roof line here. And you, you know what? You don't have to overthink it any more than this. Um, just have fun with your little with your little pieces and parts and designs. I'm just going to cut a little triangle out here. Oh, and we'll see if that's a good size. Christine says, these would be so cute for a baby mobile. Oh, that sounds so sweet. Yeah, you could just back them any way you want. Okay, so that's kind of the, the makings of a, of a little house here. It's kind of a big house on a little heart, uh, but I think it'll be room enough for us to work and um, be able to see what's happening. Now, what we're gonna do, y'all, is we're gonna look at a, a, we're gonna look at a few different stitches, and maybe if you already know how to embroider, then maybe let us know what your favorite stitches are. Before we actually start, I'm going to show you a few of the stitches that I used in these pieces, and um, hopefully we'll get to a number of them so that you start to build your stitch library if you're not familiar already and I have a little uh, working sample over here I can show you too. Okay so let's look at this and we're gonna come in real close again so here's my first uh, little ornament heart. This you might be very familiar with is the blanket stitch. We used it here in the applique. We used the blanket stitch to bind these two hearts together as well and um, I actually used the blanket stitch here in this little footpath but I filled it in with another stitch, so we'll come back to that. So that is just the, the traditional blanket stitch, which is like a three-quarter square, if you will. It's like a three-quarter square. 
Then I filled in here with some French knots and this is a wee little weaving stitch. This long magenta one is called a, oh, I'm gonna think of it, um, fern stitch with French knots in the middle. So this little birdie here, again with the blanket stitch, and you don't have to use this. I mean, sometimes I felt like I, maybe I overuse it, but the blanket stitch I use to attach the wing and to attach the two sides. Underneath the belly here, we have the running stitch. And here I have, it's called a pistol stitch. Like a, it's like a French knot with a tail. And then this is called a fly stitch right here, I'm using here. So we're gonna look at a number of these that you might consider for making your own piece. This is the running stitch, a straight stitch along the bottom. And we're gonna look at each of these, y'all. This here is called a stem stitch, a satin stitch, where you fill in something solid with those horizontal lines. And then here I have French knots over Lazy Daisies and um, straight stitches. So we'll look at these things together and you can just have fun and kind of go off with your, you know, your own ideas as you make these little things. So I have something ready. <laughs> no, I know I have something ready to stitch with. Funnily, I don't have my... Uh, I don't have my yellow. That's funny. Not funny. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh, Julie shares she thinks she's going to make some cards using using stitched felt. Oh, that's it's so fun. Yeah, you could definitely put put these on cards. You could make these cards themselves. Um, and I'm going to get myself going here. Sorry about that. Oh, Wendy Schaefer says, oh my gosh, those textures. Uh, it's, it's amazing what you can do with handmade felt. Just to see that handmade felt is really so different. I'm going to steal my, I have a needle tucked back here, so I'm going to steal this one out right here. I'm going to steal it from this piece, which is just a um, saved for us to do later. So let me steal him out of here. Oh, Gail says, funny, in my part of the country, we have different names for some of these stitches. Oh, interesting. Well, that's cool to know then, you know. It, really, I think it doesn't matter, and I'm not I'm not a professional embroiderer. <laughs> 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 for me, it's just fun sometimes to try something that's maybe out of my wheelhouse and a little bit different. And so I'm going to start by putting my little house body right here. And we're not really going to knot things, but what I will do is just um, start in the back of my piece here and get it started. And if you, if you feel like you want to anchor it, well then just go through again. Now, one thing with these, uh, with embroidery, if you start to look at guides and learn how to do it, you'll see that stitches get um, alphabets. To, as you're learning to make them. So generally speaking, where you come out the first time is A. So where the needle initially comes out is point A. So that's point A. And then this is going to be uh, the stem stitch. So where we go back in is point B. But often, when you put your thread in for your needle point in for point B, and I'm going all the way through my base heart, by the way, you put, I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer so it's easier to see. You put your needle in for point B, well then you're immediately gonna come up out of point C. That's generally how it works. And so for point C, and you're gonna see this in just a minute, you come up part of the way to where you were. So this turns into an overlapping stitch so that we come down and it's sort of stacked, if you will. So that becomes point A, and then I'm gonna go in at point B, and I'm gonna come out at point C, which is partially up. Now, don't ask me how long or if there's specific rules or whatever, because I'm not the rule girl. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah, let's do that. Make it longer, make it shorter. You know, someone's gonna say it comes up a third or whatever. I think you can make it up as you go. And you know, the people who get the books that are get really famous are the ones who break all the rules anyway. So mm -hmm. be a rule breaker. <laughs> okay, so this again, this is the this is the stem stitch, and it's great for you know making borders and stuff. It's definitely an option for making a border. So I like to think of stitches as being built on other 
on other base stitches. And if we look at this um, stem stitch, if you will, and I'll just terminate that one right there, it's basically based on what's called a straight stitch. So this is an example of this right here. We'll use this as an example for a straight stitch. That's just a straight stitch. Well, here's one, here's two, here's three. These would be great for like grasses or even flowers, if you will. And it's just in and out, in and out, right? From bottom to bottom to top, top to bottom. So just single stitches. And then um, this is called a running stitch. So when you do a running stitch, and let's see if I have a needle back here. Oh, uh, I have one ready. I have I have stuff I have stuff ready for you somewhere. Um, if you do a running stitch, then um, I know I had all these things ready. Let's see here. I'm going to do one right here for you. So a running stitch. You're just going to, uh, it would be great to build like a little horizon. In fact, I'll do it on this on this guy right here. Let's do like a little horizon, if you will. Uh, and you can always take it out. You can also use your um, samples if you want, like your, uh, your super scrappy stuff to practice your, your stitches on. So a running stitch, you're going to come out at your point A, and then you're just going to go in at B and out at C. And I'm going to take this back out, right? in it and out and in and out and out and that's how you do just a running stitch so you can actually thread it through and I'm going to take this out I'm not going to leave it in I just wanted to show you that's basically like um, a long a long trail of a straight stitch is a running stitch it's super easy to do and it's not intimidating at all so you have a straight stitch, you have a running stitch. We just did this stem stitch here. Um, and you can do some other things. So if you do a bunch of straight stitches right close next to each other, this is called a satin stitch. Really good for filling in areas, little blocks, like I did here in my door and my window. And then here, these are called a seed stitch, where you basically you're gonna do two straight stitches side by side, like the satin stitch, but you can kind of jump them around, do some here, do some this direction, do some that direction, so you can kind of break it up, if you will. So these are all, I consider them just built on like the straight stitch. So running stitch might be good for our rooftop, and also another stitch that I like, um, which is called the fly stitch to um, decorate that rooftop. So let's add another color in here, which is the purple one I just had. Vicki asks, are you using, how many strands of the embroidery floss? I'm just using, using the, the whole thing. You can split it and I will, uh, I was going to address that with y'all later to show you like, depending on where you're, uh, where you're working, you can split it and make it thinner if you want. So for my little roof line, I'm just going to do a running stitch like we just looked at right here and get him into place. Wendy says, this has given me so much inspiration. I'm gonna quit being so stingy about using my wool. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely get your scraps, you know, save, save your scraps and you, you know, you can have a lot of fun with this. And this might be something fun to do when you, you don't really have the gumption to set up a big web felting project. You can just, Pull out your scraps, make a little greeting card. Heck, maybe you wouldn't even have somebody to give it to yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you could still make it. So with the running stitch, and I know it's hard to see color-wise, but you get the point. We're just going in and out. In and out, in and out. And just for fun, we'll put some uh, fly stitches in this roof line. I like it. It seems good for like making little roof shingles. And I'm gonna go across here. I don't know what it is about houses and hearts, but I have a thing for both houses and hearts. Like if you just left my own devices, I could probably just make houses and hearts. <laughs> I, would be, I would be very content to just make up stuff with houses and hearts. And yeah, I don't know what it is, but to me, I guess it just always represents home, Yeah, you know? My husband and I have uh, have just a whole bunch of art hearts that 
yeah, just a whole bunch of them. And some people have, have been others made for us and some I've made or whatever they are. Now, I didn't collect connect my two roof lines very well because I'm not paying good attention. So just for fun, I'm going to bring that texture down here and we'll attach it. Uh, I'm going to do some straight stitches just straight down here. Just make it a little bit interesting. Jane asks, if you don't have any embroidery floss, could oh. you use... Uh, really strong sewing thread yeah you know you could use you can use maybe like especially if you have a button thread or or whatever it just may not stand up on the surface as much as you want and you know what embroidery floss is readily available y'all so um get what you can from amazon um, michael's carry some i think it's really not expensive so just have fun and get your hands on whatever you can um it's definitely the, the little spools, whatever you call them, bobbins, they don't cost much money. The one thing I want to say, though, is you'll be really happy if you spend the time to make your own little bobbins rather than they come in basically like a little mini hank. And if you try and work with them off the hank, you're just going to turn them into a knot. So when you're really feeling um, like, I don't know, devoid of great amounts of creative energy <laughs> make yourself little bobbins write the number on there because you're gonna run out and wonder what it was or sometimes I tuck the label in you know what whatever particular floss it was but if you make yourself these little bobbins you'll be happy that you did otherwise your box will probably always be a mess <laughs> it will stay a mess now I'm gonna leave these threads dangling here for a moment so that we can uh, come back to them if we want. So all we've done so far is the running stitch, a straight stitch, and um, the stem stitch. Let's look at, um, let's add another color in the roof line, and I'll add the, how are we doing on time? We're okay. We're good. Okay, let's add a little something in here. Oh, Devin says she's really inspired to do a school of fish. Oh, yeah. I have fish on, on my bucket list for this year, too, Devin. I'm, I'm so with you. Fish are so colorful, can be so colorful and playful, for sure. Yeah, fish should be fun. And, um, okay. So, again, I'm just working with the whole thing because I don't want to take the time to to split it. But I, you know what I'm going to do? Just in the roof line in a couple places, I'm going to put uh, the, the fly stitch. Let me show that to you right here. So this is an example of the, the fly stitch. And it's like a little V or swoop de doo with a little anchor to it. And it can be um, like this with no tail at all, just a little anchor, or you could also give it a long tail. It just depends on, on what you're making. So I'm going to put it in the roof line. And again, you come up, you're coming up at point A right here. I'm going to come up at point A. Just make sure I leave a little thread back there. Point A. And basically, you're going to swoop the thread down. Just hold onto it with your thumb or whatever. And then come horizontal to that for point B. Point B, you're just going to maybe go a quarter inch, depending on the size of what you're doing. I'm going to do this a little bit smaller because I'm going to make it like little roof shingles. So I'm going to come just directly next to or a little space across from A, go in at B, and then C is going to come out down below, like in between the two points, if you will, just like that. And C is going to help form the anchor. So we had a little loop. Sorry, I have all my threads back there, they're kind of messy. A little loop, and see how C kind of becomes a little anchor? And then you go in, D is going to be basically like right where C was. And that's going to be the anchor. But what we'll do is we're going to come back up at another point A. This will all make sense in just a moment. So the D is going to be our little anchor stitch. See? So let's just do one more. So we're going to loop down, go in at B. So right next to that there, in at B, out at C, which is a little point below in between the two. And then that sort of anchors it into that little shape. And then we give it a little point. I'm going to put one more up here just to make it look charming. <laughs> like three little roof tiles. So cute. And they can be wonky, you know. This is not being entered in an exhibit somewhere. <laughs> this is like 
folky, crafty, fun art. Uh, so can everyone see you fine? You doing okay there? Okay. So in at B, or in at B, out at C, and then we have our little anchor. So now we have like just three little, three little cutesy roof tiles, and you probably can add one couple more over on the on the sides. Oh, Jane says this tutorial is better than a stitch book. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put, I'm gonna plunk one more over here because I know I'm gonna want one in a minute. So now the thing I like about this or this this stitch I think has a, a great cousin. Um, called the fern stitch and I'll show you that I used it on my other heart um, and you're kind of linking them all you're kind of linking them together so there that's some fun some fun little roof tiles okay let's um, let's see if I can show you the fern stitch I won't necessarily do it but uh, this one here so that you'll see that that looks a lot like the fly stitch that we just did, but it's kind of got a different way of getting there. So in this case, this was A, B, C, and D all together. And this one, um, let's see if I thought I had some thread here. Um, oh, I'll put it, I'll put it on our little um, stitch thingy here super duper up close. Let's look at the, the fly stitch. I'll put it on there so you can see. Oh, Sally says, hand stitching is one of my favorite ways to meditate and relax. Oh. So calming. Yeah, some people are really good at it and I'm I'm always impressed with what they're able to come up with. And me, I feel like I, you know, I still really have to think about it, but that's okay. So, you know, stretching sometimes is is really fun too. Um, okay, so this one is a little different in that we're going to, to do the fern stitch, we wanna kind of build a trail down. So we're going to go up at A and down at B. And then for C, we're gonna come up over here. So this will all make sense in a moment. C, like this is what we're doing, but Really, what we're going to do is D, I think this is right, D, can you see? In at D, so it's kind of across, and then you're going to come back down, and it's just a little more complex than the one we just did, but now, oh, I think I, I, think I, I went through my thread rather than over it. Um, then you kind of have this anchor. So again, there's A comes to B, in, in at B, you're going down the stem, C is the little branch over there off to the side. We sort of swoop our thread down because we're gonna be anchoring it, right? This kind of reminds you of that fly stitch. It's easier when you're in your lap because you can move this thing all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we're going to go in at D, which is sort of diagonal to that, and then basically right back out where we were at B uh, to anchor it down, and that's the fern stitch, so you can kind of build a little long train there. It's cute, and it also reminds of little bird feet. The fly, the fly stitch could be like, like little, little bird feet. Well, let's go back to our, our little housey over here, and um, why don't we build some little grassy bits over here off to the side. I told Anne I should have come prepared with like, you know, 10 needles loaded with color, <laughs> but I didn't. So thanks y'all for your patience today as we go through this. Okay, so this little stitch is called a lazy daisy that I'm about to do. Um, you can, um, you can use the lazy daisy to build a flower or just build some little loop-de-doops that look like plants and that's what I did right here. The dark greens are the lazy daisies that I'm about to show you and so it's basically We're gonna make like a loop that's just sort of a little different. It's almost like the opposite of the little uh, fly stitch that we did, so hopefully this makes sense. So it's like you're gonna make a loop like this. And so 
A is where we come up, B is where we go back in, and B is almost right next to A, and then we're gonna come out at C. So it's like upside down. The difference is this is a little more narrow and long, so it forms these little loops. Now, you use almost the same thing to make, to form a chain, but this is like a disjointed chain, or I don't know, it's called something like that, like a separated chain or a lazy daisy, because you could use it to build like the petals of a daisy flower. So up at A, oh sorry, we're off camera here, up at A, in at B, out at C, and you could stagger these so that they're, they're different heights. And we're basically just over here gonna form some little foliage bits to put some flowers on. So these are like little stems, if you will. And I also like them because you can make little openings to put in some other color if you want. So let's put in one more because odd numbers seem to work better. So we came up at A, in at B, and again out at C. And you can see how easy these are. Not, don't need a great amount of skill. And then just anchor it right there. Now while I have this needle threaded and it's all ready to go, why don't we just put some... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a French knot over here. I'm gonna anchor down the corner of my house and then we'll just add a little bit of foliage there as well. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna do some French knots here, but let's do some French knots over here um, to just anchor down my house, even though we could do the running stitch over it, the um, stem stitch over it. So a French knot, we're going to come up through the bottom. I put my little piece down here and we take our thread in this hand and we're going to wrap, oh I like to wrap the thread, wrap the thread around the needle two or three or four times, whatever you like, and then hold on to it with this hand and then just push it back down through your fabric and hold on to it there and pull that all the way through and that's gonna form a sweet little French knot. Great for flowers, great for shrubbery, great for just filling in and, uh, and doing little accents. So you can make them thin or thick if you separate your floss, your embroidery floss into smaller bits, um, then they'll be more dainty and delicate. You can do you know three wraps or four wraps and the more wraps then the thicker they will be. You just wanna hold on to them so that thread goes right back through the middle and that forms your little French knot. So we have some other colors trailing back here that we're already using, our purple and our pink. So let's use these to make some French knots here on top of our little uh, flower stems. Uh, Diane uh, says that that was remind her of uh, cacti. Oh, that's true. Uh, somebody made the cutest little, um, they were, I think they were watching like the Mushroom House tutorial and they made a cactus house. Oh, oh my God. It's in the, it's in the Facebook group. Okay, here we go. So we're going to make a little French knot here right on top. And you know what? They don't, it doesn't have to be just in the middle because you can make multiples, but so uh, you just come up and again, you're going to wrap your thread around your needle. Sorry your key motions there and then just go right back into your piece and pull it tight so French knots are just so sweet sometimes you can just get lost in just doing tons and tons of, of little French knots mm -hmm. they're very sweet to make and you don't have to only put them on the top there you know you can just make a little cluster of flowers here and then break it up in the colors too and right inside um, these little bits is a great opportunity if you want to add in another another green or another color. These ones were done the opposite. I did the um, I did this little stitch with the dark green and then I filled in with the light. But you could go back and just fill in with the light green here. And then these are all just clusters of little French knots uh, set right on top. So why don't we look at doing the blanket stitch, which I think is the only other stitch that's on um, this one and these ones. Well, this is a weaving stitch. We probably won't have time to do that, but um, the blanket stitch is the only other thing. And I thought I had a heart to put this on, but why don't we do it? We'll do it, we'll do it right here. We'll do the blanket stitch right on this one. So we'll come up a little. Uh, we'll put these guys aside and let's do um, well, we'll do the purple will show up really well. That color I think is too dark. Let's go with 
I'm probably going to run out of this, but I'll start with it anyway. <laughs> so pretty. I'll start with it anyway. It'll kind of tie it together with the little uh, purple roof line. And sewing it onto handmade felt is one idea, but obviously this could just be put into the background of a bigger piece or on something on linen, whatever y'all want, is, is open. Yeah. Fun. Uh, Glenda says, thank you so much for sharing the French knot tutorial. That's a stitch I always have problems with. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to encourage y'all. So when I was building my little footpath here, I just got just a really random scrap and started, you know, figuring out how I wanted to do my footpath with this the same blanket stitch that we're about to do. It's just I was going to be doing it flat, which I'd never really done, just used it, you know, in that way and, you know, stacked them up this way. So when you're practicing something like the French knots or whatever, get something that you're really not going to use or you, you want to use it just as a scrap and dedicate it to being like a little trainer for yourself. Um, I don't know why, but whenever I start like trimming something like this, I always kind of start on the side somewhere rather than right up top. Um, and I always want to make sure up here somehow that this isn't where I finish. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not the, the best at this, as you can tell. I'm very much a novice. Now I have all this thread back here, so if I'm going to be sealing this off, I may as well uh, cut it off and be done with it. I thought I was going to use it to do the border, but I, I think I'm not going to. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that. I do have this pinned down a bit just so that it doesn't go squirreling all around and you want it to kind of stay straight. Again, I'm going to anchor somewhere here in the back and just, just to get myself started. I like to know that it's in there, but you don't have to knot these things off. You, do, you don't need a bunch of knots back there for sure. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just come up, even though uh, with the blanket stitch, we're, you know, we're going to be attaching it to the whole thing meaning all the way through here. So yeah, you're gonna see it on the back. And if you really wanna cover it, well then you can glue something to the back if you want, or glue this to something, um, whatever. But yeah, the stitches are gonna show because we're gonna be attaching them to this piece of felt. So with the blanket stitch, um, caught on my, okay. With the blanket stitch, here we go. So this is the A point that were coming out. And you know, you can try and be really uniform about these. I've seen people use little whole little cards that have the exact spacing, or you could have fun with it and even stagger them and have them short and long. That's also a very interesting and cute way to go about it. And this blanket stitch is basically the binding stitch between the two. So remember, go all the way through both pieces. B, you're coming over maybe about a quarter inch or whatever is the, the length you decide. And we're gonna come up just right beneath where the two of them are joined. And I know some people have like lots of motions for doing the blanket stitch. Um, I like to do it with as minimal motion as possible. And for me, it's just about having that thread above when we anchor. So I like the thread is going to be going across right here. So I just have it up there to start with, not a bunch of extra movements. And go right across here. It's basically, like I said, a three-sided square. There we go. And you can make it as little or as large as you want. So all you're doing is your needle is going over, your needle is always going over that thread. And if you just have the thread above there to begin with, meaning above where you're stitching, then you don't have to do um, any extra steps of looping it through. You know, you just have it up there and you put your needle over it. So let's just run a couple more of those. Now, is there any other, is there any questions I should answer, Anne? No questions. Uh, yeah. We are just uh, really enjoying. Uh, Lori says this is a great use of blanket stitch. And um, Wendy says your footpath looks so nice. At first I thought they were neps. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so the footpath basically is built the same way we're doing now. And I'm just doing rows, you know, rows of these. And then I filled it in with the seed stitch, which I showed you. 
um, which is just straight stitches side by side, or more like the satin stitch because you're just filling it in. But I didn't try and fill it in all the way. I thought about actually going back and putting some little greenery in there. So I left some spaces. You know how moss and clover and stuff kind of grows in, in between the bricks? Um, so that's what I thought about doing. So that's all you have to do for the blanket stitch. It's really easy and it can be as uniform or non-uniform as you want, staggered or whatever. And so we learned how to do the straight stitch. We looked at the satin stitch. We looked at the seed stitch. We looked at the stem stitch. Uh, we looked at the fly stitch and the fern stitch and the blanket stitch. Oh, and the, um, French knot. And so just for fun, why don't I show you just a couple of more stitches that you can use in your pieces um, built on these same ideas. Super fast and um, they're super easy if you want to. Just at least one or two. I do have a piece. I knew I had something loaded. <laughs> I, knew, I knew I had something, something loaded to show you. So one I'm going to show you is called, um, I know it as the pistol stitch, and it's like a French knot with a long tail. And I think it um, just makes cute little fillers and uh, little swirly do's. So this is called the pistol stitch. So let me just start it here. So think of French knot with a tail. So normally when we make a French knot, let me just get all my thread here. Um, normally when we make a, a French knot, you, you want to hold on to the thread and get a really tight knot. The difference here with the pistol stitch is you're going to give it a little, you're going to give it a little tail right there. So I'm going to do four so we have a decent size little knot. So basically you're going to go up a bit you're pulling this tight but you're going to go up a bit away from where you came out and I'm just worried my thread underneath is too short up a bit from where you came out and it's going to have a little tail like that so that's called a pistol stitch very simple it's like a French knot with a tail that's all it is so you never know what you might fill in with that uh, what or what you might decorate there on the end so again it's just a French knot you're going to take your thread one, two, three, or four, whatever you want, hold on to it, and then go back into your fabric away from, and that's that's the only difference, is you go away from the point where you started, and that's called the, the pistol stitch. Really cute little thing um, to fill in with. Now this is a, a cross, which you know you could definitely just figure out, but with a cross, you're coming up at A. Remember, everything's like A, B, C, D. You come up at A and down at, up at A. You're going to go in at B and then immediately back out at C. So in at B, out at C, which is across from A. And then in at D. I was just kind of put my thread where I wanted to go. And then, you know, cross stitches don't have to be in a row. They could be all over the place. They could be really jagged. They could fill in a really cute little garden or something. But you're just going to come back out if you're, you know, if you know where you're going at your next point A, and then repeat. So in at B, out at C. Drag your thread, and you know you could play with that. They don't have to be perfect in my world anyway. And at C here. Okay. Now, this one to me just looks like an asterisk, um, but I've heard it called um, an ermine stitch. And it's just like this, except you start with a straight stitch first, basically. So then um, A and B goes straight up and down, and then you do the rest. So A and B runs a straight line up and down and then this becomes C over here and D E up here and F and mine's all wonky but wonky's fun too I mean stars in the sky aren't all one shape <laughs> You've got character. Totally, totally, totally. So there, we've, we've added a couple of more anyway. So we've added the pistol stitch, we've added the cross stitch, and the ermine or the asterisk or uh, whatever you want to call it 
just, just a few more things for you to play with. And hey, you could always just make one of these if you just wanna practice, but I hope that you'll make some of these and then share them in our Facebook group, which is where we like to hang out all week long. So if you're not part of that group, uh, please do join us right there. Um, everything that we're working with today, you can get on our website. And I hope that if you make something, you'll share it in our group, but that you'll also tag us on um, Instagram so we can see it. And what else do I wanna say? If you're looking for more advanced tutorials, definitely check out our online school. We have some fun classes going on. It's called feltingtutorials.com. Lots of great, great teachers, fun projects from dragons to dresses to headwear to landscapes. You can check them out. In fact, we are launching to, we have a five day class launching right now. It's really a five day class, but it's dyeing fibers and fabrics and making nano felt wearable, wearables by my friend Charity. We did a live with her a couple of weeks back. And so we're just gonna start four days of live sessions, which will support people in the class. So lots of fun there to have in the school. I hope you'll check those out. But for today, Anne's got some prizes for you, don't you, Anne? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Tons of fun stuff. Okay. We got some names in the hat. What are you giving away today, Anne? Today we are giving away some lo a lovely collection of um, fibers. We've got some Merino Top Short Fiber Bat and, of course, MC1 mm -hmm. in there. So perfect for uh, felting and making your own hearts or houses or birds yeah. or, or fish. <laughs> yeah, you can wet felt or needle felt with, with these fibers. And these hearts up here are made with our MC1. We made them a few years back. That's just, I think it's on our regular Facebook group. Mm -hmm. You'd have to look in the videos, but we made, I, some people have asked about these and we made them on a Wooly Wednesday a couple of years back. So have fun when we just felt it on my camera, my phone. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So we're just giving you some fun fibers to play with and they'll probably even support some of the projects that we have coming up. And I'm going to draw a name too. And if your name isn't called, remember, you can still comment down below for a chance to win. Again, next week, who do you got? I have got Bonnie Johnson. And I have Linda Reeder. Congratulations, gals, and thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We can't wait to see what you make. Uh, remember to let us know your favorite takeaways from today down below. And most of all, just thanks for being here, and be sure you take extra, extra good care of yourself this week because you really do deserve it. You do. Yeah, we mm -hmm. appreciate you. Have a great day, y'all. Stay warm. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye.